And this is Becky, and we're with a couple of bees read. And we also drink and review wine. So what's the weekly wine, Becky? Uh, it's a unique uh, blend. It's a, it's a Gruner Veltner, and we have reviewed a Gruner Veltner before, but oh. it was from Pip the Greeter Winery. Okay. And this is called The Resident. Um, it is an Austria wine, and it is the wine that Wolfgang Puck says is perfect for uh, winter schnitzel. I think is how it's called. This I wine. I remember this yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah. But this is a different, uh, it's a different label. It smells fresh. Mm, it's a very soft. Yeah. I think not. It's definitely not a bold wine. Mm -mm. It's a. It's very light. It's fresh. It's a lemony. Uh, yeah. It's a lime. It has lime. lime. Yeah. Okay. You can taste that citrus mm -hmm. though. Mm-hmm. Uh, also pear and uh, green apple. So it's a little tarter. Yeah. A little bit more tart than. Um, it's, it's dry, it's, you know, just not, it's not a, a sweet wine at all. So if you like a good dry white, this is the one, the resident Gruner Veltliner. And I usually, my favorite white wine is usually Chardonnay, but this definitely gives us a run for its money. Yeah, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And I know we say that every week, but Scout and Sour does not make a bad wine. They really okay. don't. Because they're very, very particular in the wineries they work with and the brands they bring in and the the wineries that they buy the grapes from and process and different things like that. So it's real unique and it's fun and pairs well with um, like pork or fish or if you're um, a vegan or a vegetarian, this is a wine that goes well with vegetarian meals because okay. it doesn't overpower, you know. I can see that, yeah. yeah. So that's really good. Okay, our book. Yes, so The Secret Book of Flora Lee. Now, we've talked about this before. Right. Um, but we had not our, finished reading it. Right. Or at least I had not. And we talked about it before our one-week hiatus. Mm -hmm. And then we finished it. You finished it over the one-week hiatus at the beach. I finished it, like, that night. I uh, know. She, she was way ahead of me. And uh, well. we talked about there being a big twist in the book and the whole and time we were at the beach i was like you, you got to that have twist you got yet? to the twist yet everybody was like it? no you know no but i think on. i'm getting close you know and and it it was the the big twist was like there there's something that is said and i can't say what it is already to give it away but well, maybe we should review like give a quick summary okay first all right you because ahead. i know we did last time but it's well, been a week. Yeah. They might yeah. have forgot. I forgot. I don't remember a week ago. <laughs> so the secret book of Flora Lee, you've got the two main characters are Hazel. Mm -hmm. And well, Hazel's the main character. It follows her from when she was 15. Right. And she was 15 during uh, World War II. Right. When they did the Pied Piper right. Act in London and they sent all the London children off to the country. And, and out of the country. And out of the country right. and all over the world to get them to safety. And she was 15 and her sister was five. Right. And they go and they were picked up by a family who, very kind mother, taking care of the, the mother is Bridie, was mm -hmm. a very interesting character. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed her. And tragically, um, when Hazel is distracted by Bridie's son, who Harry. is Harry, the romantic lead. She, they kind of get distracted, and Flora Lee disappears. She was napping by the river, and that's the last anyone saw of her. So this huge tragedy shakes things up. They're never able to find her. Years later, Hazel is working in a bookstore, and she gets a first edition book with paintings in it, and the book is called the Whisperwood mm -hmm. series. And Whisperwood is the magical world that she made up for her baby sister, for her yes. baby sister right. to kind of 
hide what was going on in the world because everything was so scary in world war ii obviously right right and so yeah that and that's kind of you know where the book takes off is this has happened um and it's so interesting it has so much history in it and i think that patty did an excellent job of taking um a real life historical event such as the Pied Piper and turning it into a fictional book. And she chose um, to follow it from the child's perspective. Because um, as she said, you know, it's mainly been done from an adult perspective. Um, right. And the Pied Piper, you know, you go back, it's a it's a German fairy tale, um, you know, and they're trying to escape the Germans at the time. and. You know, the the Pied Piper didn't end well. I mean, all the children disappeared and, and were never died, seen again. Presumably know. died, never so seen again. They just all disappeared and and you know, that's it's kinda like, oh my gosh. And you know, of course there were stories like Hazel's and Flora's, the the good stories where it began well for them. And then there were some of course that were they didn't go to very nice people. Yeah. You know. You know. And I mean, to me, as a parent, as a grandparent, that that would just be a nightmare. There's, you know, because, you know, I look at our two and, you know, one of them is right at the age of Flora Lee when she mm-hmm. disappears. And I'm like, you know, I, I know, I, I just cannot imagine that I would let my child go off to some stranger that I didn't know. Yeah. Or, you know, I just, I don't know what I would do, but it, it was it was a horrible situation, um, you know. But she, but Patty does an excellent job, and the back and forth between the 40s and the 60s is she does yes. that well that transition back yes. and forth and in time. Also, I say so you know me, I can take it or leave it when it comes to historical fiction. Um, but the most of the historical fiction I've read has had to do with World War II. Mm-hmm. I think of all those books that I have read, this is the best at making you understand how those people felt. Yes. And understand that this was a real thing that everyday people went through. A lot of the historical fiction about World War II I've read has been about Winston Churchill and the people who were in charge and knew what was going on at all times. Right. Not- whereas this has children. They didn't know what was going on. Mm-mm. They, they didn't, didn't know. They just knew they weren't with mom and dad anymore. Exactly. You know, so, very tragic times. But again, there are some twists toward. It's not really at the end of the book. I would say it's like seventy-five percent through. Yeah, yeah. You know, seventy-five percent through the book, and you get the first big twist, and then. As it goes along, you it's like little twists as you mm-hmm. go along, you know? And it just really, um, it keeps it so interesting and keeps your attention, so. And part of it is even the, the characters who I think in any other book would be cast in a villain role. Um, you know, the character I'm talking about, yes. but I can't say it because it's a twist. Yes. Um, you feel bad for her. Really, right? Like, bad. Very Because it's it's a character who was very much broken by the war. Yes. And made poor choices, and it led to this extra tragedy of the disappearance of a young girl. Yeah. And it's just, it's just terrible. And even though at the time, you know, she felt like she, she was doing something to help, and then it mm-hmm. just ruined everything. And, you know, this poor child disappears and everything. But... I would say definitely, uh, I just say, Patty, thank you for a great read. Absolutely. Uh, loved it. And, you know, we got to meet her and we did a, a yes, little thing about meeting good. her. And we both have our signed copy. And we want to thank yes. you for Patty. You were just so, just such a lovely person to meet. And very excited. Looking forward to your next one, which um, she didn't talk, she couldn't give us any hints yes. really about it. But she's, hard at work on the next one. And I want to read the next one. I, I had never read a Patty Callahan Henry book. Mm-hmm. This was my first one. Um, and it kind of, it got me out of a I reading I was going to say, I've got somewhere behind <laughs> this quilt here. I think it's right up here is all my well, Patty. Now that I'm out of the reading slump, I'm trying to catch up right. with all the books I haven't read. Yeah. 
Because as you guys know, I haven't reviewed a book in a while yeah. it's because I, I hadn't really read any. And like since reading this, yeah. I think I've read three. Well, I'm just going to point out all my little oh, yeah. notes. It's like just great little things that, you know, little quotes and things. It is a beautifully quotable it, book. It is. And I loved it. So thank you, Patty. And pick it up and read it if you haven't already. Absolutely. Prepare yourself to cry. Oh, yes. Definitely. I was crying on the couch and my daughter, my daughter's looking at me like, Mommy, are you okay? Do books make you cry? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> if they're good, they make you cry. They make you feel all the feels. Absolutely. Yeah. And this was one of those books. So like 10 out of 5 stars. Definitely go get you a copy. Definitely. And until next time, guys. Bye.